When I was a youth pastor, I used to always have young people, teenagers, preaching and leading worship. I used to love platforming the young people. One time, this young man named Daniel Gwynn, it was his senior year in high school, and uh, it was his Wednesday night to preach. And he comes in on a Wednesday night, and he's got this notebook with him. And I saw him like 30 minutes before service. I went over and I said, hey, man, you feeling good? Are you excited about preaching? And Daniel Gwynn says, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a little nervous, but I'm really, really excited. And I said, yeah, what do you, what do you got, what do you got there? Like, what's that? He said, oh, the, these are my notes. And I said, yeah, can I, can I see those really quick? I, I just want to look. And he says, yeah, yeah, here are my notes. And I grabbed his notebook. And I mean, I almost threw those notes in the garbage. And I definitely kept them. And I said, how dare you walk up in here with a notebook? Is the word of God hidden in your heart? Have you hidden God's word in your heart? Do you know this sermon or not? Do you, are you going to speak from your heart? Or are you going to read some manuscript? And he goes, no, I, I feel like it's in my heart. And I said, yeah, well, it better be because you definitely don't have any notes. And I bet you if I did that to you, you would be fine. Most people are so scared to get up on stage with no notes. They're so scared that they're gonna not be able to memorize a sermon. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you the biggest tip. I mean, the biggest how-to on how to memorize your content. I think that when we get up on stage, we wanna come across as if we are communicating from our heart and nothing hinders that more than a reliance on notes. I wanna help you preach without notes. And in this video, I'm gonna give you the biggest tip that I use to do just that. Let's go. So, uh, during the global pandemic that was 2020, one of the highlights was that um, ESPN aired The Last Dance, all right? It was this massive Michael Jordan documentary, uh, kind of going through his last season on the Bulls, but really, it was almost like a documentary on his whole life. It was great, but the documentary uh, triggered this debate that's been going on for a really, really long time, and the debate is who is the GOAT? Who's the greatest of all time? Who's the best basketball player of all time? I remember walking in a church uh, a couple of months ago and everyone had watched The Last Dance and a group of guys, a group of guys were huddled in the lobby and they were debating. Uh, my friend Sam Perkins, massive Kobe fan. My friend Brian Bullock, he's a huge LeBron fan. And I mean, they are just debating. They're going on and on and on about who's better, Michael or Kobe or LeBron. And they are debating and debating and debating. And here's the interesting thing about this debate. In this debate, Sam, who's, you know, debating that, you know, LeBron will should not be in this conversation, that it's ridiculous that we're even maybe even comparing LeBron to Michael Jordan. You know, Sam is debating and Sam is holding no notes. He has no notes. He doesn't have a notebook. He doesn't have a sermon outline. He doesn't have a why LeBron is not as good as Michael Jordan. He doesn't have any, uh, he doesn't have a PowerPoint presentation. My friend Brian Bullock, who's a massive LeBron James fan. Um, he doesn't have any notes. They are both debating from memory. And the reason that they're able to debate from memory is because it is a debate. No one, and I mean no one, who argues with their spouse pulls out a notebook. Well, I, you know, I need you to make the bed because of this, this, this. No, a debate is a debate. An argument is an argument. And when you're in an argument, you are in the moment. You're full of passion. You're speaking from your heart. Maybe there are some statistics that you have read, but the statistics are so important that you committed them to memory without even trying. And if you can do that, that means you can preach without notes. If you can debate about whether or not LeBron James is the best basketball player of all time, or whether or not Kobe was the best basketball player of all time, or whether or not Michael Jordan or Bill Russell or whoever is the best basketball player of all time, if you can debate sports, if you can debate why your spouse should do the dishes more or pick up the kids or whatever you debate about, if you can debate, you can preach. And here's why I never have to try hard to memorize my sermon content. Because a sermon is a debate. 
If I'm preaching on joy, that means I'm debating with all the depressing thoughts that a person has allowed to run rampant in their mind. If I'm preaching on tithing or giving or generosity, I'm debating with that person's stinginess or their fear or their scarcity mindset. I'm debating with that person. If I'm preaching on sexual purity, I am debating with our culture's mindset or our culture's um, dominant way of thinking about sexual purity. I'm in a debate. So here's what I like to do when I'm sermon prepping. If I'm doing a sermon on reasons why you should not smoke weed, okay? Reasons why the marijuana is bad for you. If that's what I'm going to write a sermon on, then now I'm going to put myself in the mind of a 15-year-old, especially if that's my audience. If I'm, I'm going to put myself in the mind of a 15-year-old and I'm going to write down the three reasons why I want to smoke weed, the three reasons why I've rationalized why smoking weed is not a problem. And now as a preacher, since I have created rebuttals from my audience, I can now uh, create counter rebuttals to the imaginary rebuttals that I know are in their mind. Jesus does this. I mean, Jesus is Jesus, so we can't do it the way Jesus did it. Jesus did this because he was a prophet. Luke chapter 9, verse 47, it says this. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and had him stand beside him. Then he said to them, whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one who is the least among you all who is the greatest. What does that verse start with? It says that Jesus knowing their thoughts. Jesus, whether it was by prof, by prophetic gift or whether he simply studied these people, he figured out how to know their thoughts. And after knowing their thoughts, he said what needed to be said. Um, and he had a leg up because he knew their thoughts. Well, guess what? If Target and Walmart can send me ads to my phone because they know what I've been searching on Google. If if companies know my thoughts, how much more should preachers know their audience's thoughts? You should know the thoughts of the people you're talking to. And by knowing their thoughts, you know the rebuttals that they're going to bring up. If you're talking about tithing or giving, you know the top three reasons why people are not tithing or are not giving. And so you, on stage, have to respond to those fears or to those apprehensions or to those rebuttals. Because while you're talking on stage, there is a voice in the mind of the listener. And that little voice in the mind of the listener is telling that person that what you're saying is not true. You're in a debate. You're already in a debate. Whether you sense it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not, you're in a debate. And I've been in rooms with people who are saying amen and nodding their heads and then going home and doing the exact opposite of what I just preached on, which means I'm in a debate, but the person is programmed to respond positively, although in the back of their mind, they are debating with what I'm saying. Every single preacher is actually a debater. And when you're debating, you don't need notes. When you're arguing with a sibling or arguing with a parent or arguing with a spouse or arguing with a friend about sports or arguing about politics or arguing about whatever you like to argue about, the moment we find ourselves in these debates, the last thing anyone pulls out are notes. No, when it's something that you care about, You've committed the information to memory. You've mulled it over. You have a conviction. You're talking from a place of, uh, of conviction, of belief. How much more should we be convicted about the things that we say on stage? When you stand on stage, you are taking a stance. You're taking a stance for joy. You're taking a stance for generosity. You're taking a stance for truth. You're taking a stance. And so when you take a stance in the same way in a debate that you don't need notes, when you get up in the pulpit, you don't need notes, especially if you begin to format your mind to see every sermon as a debate. Every single sermon is a debate and you're debating with the spirit of fear or a spirit of jealousy or a spirit of uh, consumerism. You're debating with whatever 
uh, tool or whatever, whatever weapon the enemy has attacked your congregation with, you are debating with them. One of my favorite books is Preaching Without Notes. I love this book. I have read this book multiple times. It's been super, super helpful. I have recommended this book to a bunch of preachers and every single person that I recommend this book to says that it's super, super, super helpful. I'm gonna link this book in the description below. I think that you would, uh, you'd be, it would, this book would add value to your life. I, I am, I'm in no way, shape or form related to Joseph M. Webb, so I'm not, yeah, I, I wish. I, I've sold a lot of these. <laughs> I've, I, well, I've helped this man sell a lot of these books, but this book has been super, super helpful to me. I think one of the best things you could do is to start memorizing your content. And that may sound like a daunting task, but I promise you, it's not as hard as you think it is. I've got so many tips on how to memorize your content. Um, how about you go to my website? How about you uh, invest in your preaching ability? Uh, I'd love for you to subscribe to this channel. I'd love for you to leave a comment, share this video if this was helpful, but I'd also love you to go to my website and consider purchasing an e-course to help you become a better communicator. One of the things that I tackle in my e-course is more tips on how to memorize content. Because I think that if you become a better communicator, everyone around you will benefit. Uh, hey, uh, so glad that you decided to watch uh, this content. Well, this is not the content. I don't know why I'm holding this up. But so glad that you decided to watch this video. We've got this cool goal to reach thousands and thousands of people to make uh, hundreds and thousands of preachers, better preachers, and so we would love it if you would turn on that notification bell, if you would leave some comments, engage with this content, and share. Uh, Till next time, folks. Peace!